What's good, everybody? It's 313 JMO. What's up, y'all? I've been, you know, off grid a bit, handling some stuff, but the smoke done cleared now after what happened on Sunday. I mean, I don't even know what to take away from it other than the fact that our team is resilient even when we play the worst game ever. I mean, Stafford had five turnovers. But he still bounced back somehow. I don't I don't know. I don't even know why he was still in the game that long. And actually, after because I wanted Stafford to play originally, but after that, maybe he shouldn't have played. Or maybe we should have threw Rudak in for like the first half and then had Stafford play the second half, do some crazy stuff like that. But that's some stuff I would have done. But our coaches have no creativity whatsoever. Um the 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 biggest takeaway from that game is Clover Quinn and Golden Tate, like our two best players on on each side of the ball. Um, I know Ziggy and Slay are Ziggy and Slay, and I know you know we got Stafford on the offensive side, and like T.J. Lang and stuff like that. But when we talk about weapons, Golden Tate is number one. He's the Saints killer, the Saints murderer, always murders the Saints. Even did it today. He couldn't have a hundred yards because he got hurt. Glover Quinn also got hurt. Um, uh, as much as I want to be mad at our defense for playing so bad, I'm actually proud of them a bit. Sean, you know, Akeem Smith was playing well. Like, I'm proud of them just just a tiny bit, but I, I kind of blame everything on them. Because even though our offense was giving up points, I mean, Stafford gave him, like, 21 points, which is unheard of. He's never done no shit like that. But even though our offense was giving up points, our defense still gave up, like, 30 points. I mean, but we know if Stafford would have, like, seen Riddick going into the half, it would have been 31-17. Or if he didn't have those two, that turnover in the end zone or pick six or anything, Like, we would have won the game, so the blame of this game will go on Stafford, but I don't think the defense deserves a pass. I don't don't know what's going on, on, but ever since Terrell Austin – well, no, ever since Jared Davis came back, Terrell Austin defenses have been out of sync, out of whack. They just look slower, and they just look – it just looked like night and day. Like, when uh, Ted Ginn scored the touchdown, I'm like, okay, it's – it was like three lines around. I'm like, okay, they gonna get them. They didn't get them. It was weird. Like this was the defense from like Arizona or New York or even Atlanta. They would have tackled Ted again. It was three lines there. How do we not tackle? I don't know. Something happened to their mojo. And I'm not gonna say it's because of loading out of left because last week there was like this too. They were even like this in the Minnesota game. I don't know what's happened to the defense. And seeing as our offense was ranked like 28th and probably be like 29th after this, they're not going to be able to carry the team for now until Taylor Decker and Kenny G get back. I mean, I can't believe those two players, Taylor Decker Kenny G, obviously TJ Lane was out. So I found that out at the beginning of the game. As soon as I found that out, I was terrified for the rest of the game. I'm like, TJ Lane out? I'm like, man, that's not about to be good for us, bro. Like, not at all. And it wasn't good for us. Kind of funny. I don't know how many sacks the Lions allowed <laughs> when in this game with all the third stringers. I bet <clears> – <throat> I don't know. I could be wrong. But I bet you we didn't allow six or seven sacks. So what does that say about the O-line? First of all, get Greg Robinson out here, uses, out of here, uses backup. I don't care how bad the backup play. Greg Robinson is a bum. But I do want to look to a few positives. One, I think Jim Bob Cooter is about to get fired. Um, and that's a positive because I, I've noticed it. Like, I know a lot of fan, Lions fans be wondering, like, why is he holding the ball so long? Y'all just y'all just get on Stafford. Get on Stafford for holding the ball too long. I mean, he deserves it. But the thing is, there's a reason why he's holding the ball too long. Like, younger Stafford, even when he had protection, he never held on to the ball this long. And I'm telling y'all, I said it in my previous video, Cooter, that's why he got to go. He has turned, I can't even believe I'm about to say this. But he's turned Stafford into Alex Smith through his coaching and getting in Stafford's mind. So now Stafford isn't as aggressive. Like, I mean, this is the same Stafford. I mean, yes, he had Megatron. 
But I would say even last year and the year that uh we went like one and seven or some shit like that. He just has confidence that he can make any throw, no matter what. And it seems like he's lost some of that confidence. Like even people weren't open. They weren't on that first play. But Stafford, the old Stafford would have still thrown it. But this new Alex Smith 2.0 Stafford, and now Alex Smith is looking like Stafford. Like, like now Alex Smith is the gunslinger. Cooter, I said it before, and I'm saying Cooter is destroying this guy. He gave Stafford some tips on how to not turn the ball over and stuff like that. But you see, he had a lot of turnovers. Now, that wasn't all because of, like, Cooter. That was on him. But, I mean... I think all of his interceptions have been, like, pick six. Like, this shit is fucking horrible. Like, Stafford, I mean, he should not have been out there. I see that now. Rudock should have been out there. Um, Cooter needs to go. And I feel like the coaching staff or maybe Cooter or maybe Cooter, they're punishing him. Because you can see the way that the games are going. Like, Stafford wants to do this. Cooter wants to do that. And Cooter says, no, you're going to do it my way. And then they get into a get into a hole and then stuff like well you got to do it my way now if you want to come back and with these last all three Atlanta all three to the NFC South fucking NFC South is open art like how but anyway I'm not gonna even get into that like that. I mean but if you want to look at it they have three good quarterbacks James Winston Winston is the weakest out of that group so if we get swept by the whole by the whole NFC South I'm gonna lose a lot of respect I mean but we beat Drew Brees last year. But they got better quarterbacks, and we seem to be struggling with that. And um, But like I was saying, like, Stafford, the game goes his way, and Cooter opens up the playbook once they're down in a hole. And I wish he'd do that from the beginning, but I think it's just time for him to go, and Caldwell needs to take over the play calling or something. Like, so we got to bring in somebody, because I don't, I don't want them continuing with this relationship. It's not working. I mean, you see New York. You see what happened with them. They just beat Denver after changing offensive coordinators. Now, I'm not going to say that's the reason why, but, I mean, I only watched, like, the first half because I wasn't really into that shit. Um, They look better offensively. Offensively, without Odell and Shepard and Brandon Marshall, which is fucking crazy to even say. But um, we got a lot of things to work on. I'm really worried about Golden Tate and Glover Quinn being hurt, though. It's not good. Hopefully they get back healthy and we get uh Taylor Taylor Decker back. Um, it, this is about health and focus and getting our team in order. And we got a while to do it, and we're gonna come up against a hot Pittsburgh team. But we know how they play on the road, so we don't know how that could go. And Pittsburgh defense, I've been watching it all season, is actually good. So we're gonna have some tough times with them. And um, I told y'all, uh, I think I said Lattimore in my last video was a good corner, and he's a rookie. Like, I wasn't lying about that because I seen the Dolphins game. He's a good corner, and he's a rookie. That's why I want Tabor to give him more time. Like, Tabor has to be the worst guy ever, or they really don't want to give him no time. I mean, you telling me, I mean, Lawson and Hayden's long catches, at least let Tabor get out there, and Tabor is a ball hawk, so I feel like a tip ball or – Something just something situation like that. He he's a playmaker, so I bet you he'll make. If he has started since the beginning of the season, I bet you he'll have at least one interception by now. And Lawson and Hayden, they're not gonna give you anything. Um, our team got a lot of uh work to do, but I'm not really worried about them at all. That loss didn't really hurt me like some of the other losses to me. I'm like, well, it, was, it wasn't a must-win game. We were on the road, and we underestimated the Saints. The Saints fans definitely told me they was about to beat our ass. I was talking hella shit. I was definitely wrong, but they did let us come back. And if 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 our team – put it like this. If our team – because something's wrong. It's a dark cloud. I don't know what it is, but if our team was how it's supposed to be, we definitely would have won on Sunday. Of course, the Saints man's not going to understand what I'm saying, but we did beat y'all ass by 15 last year, so I'm just saying. Um, And the team, like, but it's something, it was something, like, us losing two games at home like that, that doesn't happen. It was something in disarray, and I'm hoping that uh, shit gets in order. Uh, I'll have some more videos coming about what we need to do specifically in the bye week, but this is just my uh, review on the game and, you know, just, just, just Lions talk. After all that stuff that transpired on that game.
I can't believe we, we gave up 52 points. This shit is ridiculous. But I knew we was going to give Drew Brees his first interception. Because I'm like, there's no way he's coming out that game with an interception. I think our defense got three turnovers total, and we still lost. I mean, we gave it up five times. But And Agnew, he's still a rookie. As electrifying as he is, he's still a rookie. And I don't want to blame that last drive on him because, I mean, even if you want to blame that last drive on him, he did put up seven for us. So you can't say anything. But, uh, you know, I'm out. It's 313 J-Mo. I see y'all, man.